Hello, Richard here. Welcome to part four of the series on doing up the old school workbench. Today, we're going to be talking about a couple of my vices. Uh, no, not drinking rum and playing poker. These vices here, these old record vices. And if you remember back to part one, these were the vices that came with the bench and they were in a pretty sorry state. Well, this one here, as you can see now, is in less of a sorry state. This is in a much happier state because I've actually restored this one. And this one is still quite sad, so we need to make this one a bit happier. Now, I'll bring you in and give you a bit of a look at what we've got here. This is a vice in its original state, and it is quite a state. You can see it's got the obligatory white emulsion splattered all over it. Like I said, I don't know why all tools in the home seem to have the obligatory white emulsion splattered over them, but this one does. You can see the uh, sort of sacrificial jaw, that's seen better days, so that needs to go and be replaced. Uh, overall, pretty grotty, so plenty of rust on there. And if we have a look on the inside, you can see again, more rust, general grottiness. It's quite rusty on the top. And over on the back here on these uh, bars, you can see there's quite a lot of rust on there as well. Now, if we hop over to the one I've actually refurbished, you can see this is a much happier state of affairs. So everything's nice and clean. Uh, the back box, that's been left. I haven't actually repainted that or anything. That's just left as it is, although it has all been taken apart and serviced. But you can see it's much cleaner. And obviously the nice shiny paint job on the front and a bit of polishing on the handle. Nothing too insane. It's still got some of the original character dings. So I'm not going too mad on that. Uh, but yeah, that's basically what we're aiming for, for this one here. Now, the first thing to do with this, obviously, is to take it apart. So we'll do that in just a minute. We'll get it on the bench and we'll take this to pieces so we can give it a proper clean up. And then we're going to be degreasing it and depainting it, or using paint stripper, and uh, we'll de-rust it. And I've got a really interesting de-rusting solution that I'll show you in a little while. So let's crack on and get this one taken apart. It's pretty straightforward to take these apart. On the end here, there's usually a split pin through this hole with a washer. If you remember with this particular vice, that was just a bent nail previously. So that's gone for a burton. Ordinarily, there'd be a split pin in there. So we just pop that out. Uh, this cap, this will just come off. That's just pushed on like so. We've got this rather nice sticker here, which tells us some information. So I'm just going to take that off because I'll probably stick that back on afterwards. And we're going to be degreasing this and de-rusting it and stuff. So just save that and then we can clean that up a bit and we'll stick it back on so it looks nice. Okay, so this piece now, this should just slide off. We need to do the uh, quick release lever here. So I'll just engage that and then this should then, as I said, come off. There we go. So that's the sort of the rear jaw, fixed jaw of the vise. And then here we've got like the nut box where this being the nut where that is. Uh, it's a little bit of surface rust on here. So I will give this a de-rust, but I'm not going to bother repainting this because the paint's pretty good and it's all gonna be internal. So that doesn't really need repainting at all. I'm not gonna waste any effort on that. Uh, let's just undo the uh, screw to the nut cover is we can uh, do some more de-rusting on that. There we go. So a little bit de-rusting there. And then you can see we've got the, uh, the cast iron half nut in here. That's there. So there you go, that's the, the half nut. That's what does the quick release part of the vise. Next, we'll just take off this little uh, nut cover here. So for this, we just take these two bolts out and they are square headed, but they're eight mil across the flats. So we'll just pop those out quite quickly. Just basically looking to get it all into separate pieces so that we can get it all cleaned up, de-rusted and so on. So that's why we're taking it all apart. It doesn't really need to be taken apart if we didn't need to, but uh, we might as well clean it up while we're there. We can, uh, make sure there's no rust in it. So bits like that, you know, that's fairly clean in terms of, doesn't look very rusty, not really clean in terms of dirt, though I've seen worse. <laughs> um, but yeah, we can clean up parts like that anyway. Next up, we can take these uh, these old jaws off. Hopefully they won't be too tight, these screws. Uh, nope, not at all. <laughs> that's all right. So we'll just pop these screws out, take this jaw off, and then that can become firewood, and we'll make a new one of those. Okay, look at that, looking better already. <laughs> So I quite like these jaws. I quite like the fact that they're recessed like this. I like the fact that they come over the top of the vise, so that's going to save you if you accidentally get your nice uh, Thomas Flynn dovetail saw and grind it into the top of the vise. It's going to hit wood. 
So all those cut marks there are witnesses to saws that have been saved in the past. So I'll make a similar one to that, I think, with the little recess. I quite like that. But that, as I say, is firewood. So on to this bit. Now the handle, the handle should just pull out from there now, like so. so you can see there, one handle. And we'll need to clean that up a little bit. The threads is just a bit dirty on that. Uh, a little bit of rust on the handle. Uh, but say so we'll degrease it and rust the whole thing anyway. So let's pop that there. And then the last piece to take off is the uh, quick release handle assembly. So that's held on with just one screw here. So we'll take the screw off, then this will pop out and we should be able to free that up. So let's see how tight that is. Hopefully not too tight is the answer. No, that's just right. So always good news when the screws come out nice and cleanly like that. So you haven't got too many problems. It's not all horribly rusted. So this should just pull out like so. A lot of fluff on there. Sawdust combined with all the grease and oil. Still, all looks quite healthy. It's not too bad, not too dirty. So that should, uh, that should clean up okay. And then the last thing to do is to take the spring off. So the spring comes off there. And quick release lever just pops out of there like that. So there you have it. That's the uh, dismantled vise. And the next thing we need to do is get it degreased. For the degreasing, I'm going to be using some of this, which is Gunk Ultra engine degreaser. Uh, it sounds fairly new to me. I haven't used this much before, but it seems to work quite well. So I'm going to use this for degreasing the, uh, the parts of the vise. Now I've got a separate video about this, which goes into a bit more detail about how it works, what it's like, what it works like on other things as well. So if you want to see that, I'll put a link in the description below. But in the meantime, let's crack on and get this thing degreased. So I'm just going to slosh a bit of this into the bottom there. And then we'll uh, have a go on the old woodworking vice and see how that comes up. So I probably won't need too much of this. That'll probably do, to be honest. We'll give that a go. All right, let's give it a little bit of a scrub then. I've got a little short bristle brush here. So we'll just agitate some of this on there and see how it does. See how much kind of gunge comes off. And they do say in the instructions to put it on and leave it for a couple of minutes to soak. So we'll just get everything kind of agitated around a little bit. Work it in there a bit and uh, we'll leave it for a few minutes and then we'll give it a rinse and see how it does. Right, well that's had a bit of a scrub over with the brush and the gun culture, so we'll leave it for about five minutes, give it all a rinse off and see how well it did. Right, so that's all the uh, the parts for the vise nicely degreased. As you can see, they've all come up quite clean. There's no, uh, no oil and grease on these parts anymore. All come up rather well. Even this, it's got all the, all the grease out of the bottom of that. You can see that. So the next thing we need to do is to take the paint off. Now for that, I'm going to be using some of this stuff. Again, this is a, a paint stripper that's fairly new to me. I haven't used this before. And as with the degreaser, I don't want to make this video all about paint stripping and uh, just restoring a vice. We've got plenty more to get on with with the bench itself. So what I'll do, I'll just crack on with the paint stripping on this. If you are interested in the process of paint stripping and how this stuff actually works, and I've got another video where I go into a lot more detail than we're going to here. So if you want to watch that, I'll put a link in the description below and then you can hop over and, uh, and see more about this stuff in action. But anyway, in the meantime, let's get paint stripping. Okay, well, let's have a look at the uh, quick release lever and that's come up really well. It's taken pretty much all the paint off that. There's a little bit left just down here, but that will just scrape off or I'll just paint over it. I'm not too worried about that. The handle for the old woodworking vise, if you remember, that was quite caked in paint. And that's all come off. That's perfectly clean. Again, a little bit of flash rusting on there, um, but it's not a problem. 
and the main sliding jaw of the vice, most of that's <coughs> gone down to bare metal. So this was this had a lot of the original paint on there, which I thought would be quite stubborn. Bear in mind that uh, the paint on here is over 60 years old, so it's going to be probably kind of matured onto it. Um, we look over the edges. There's a few little remnants left. Nothing to worry about. I mean, just a, a little bit of a scrape, and that will be gone. And it's got most of the old paint off the underside. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's really good on that. Now that the paint's stripped off, it's time to look at the third and last chemical process, which is going to be to remove all the rust. As you can see, there's a bit of surface rust on a few pieces. And on the front of here, where we've uh, stripped the paint off, we've got a bit of flash rusting, and there's some rust on the back of these uh, rods. So we need to give it a good old soak in some de-rusting solution. And what I'm going to use for that is this, Built Hamber. Deox C. Now this is my absolute favourite de-rusting solution. I've used quite a few over the years and this is by far my favourite one. So again, in the interest of time, so that this doesn't become like a four hour epic, I'll just show you the quick version of de-rusting all of this. And as usual, if you want to see this in more depth, I've got a separate video that I'll link below where I talk all about this stuff and I show it in use on this vice and on a few other projects as well. But for this one, we'll keep it simple. So let's get some of this mixed up and then I'll show you how it works. Here we are, all the vice parts are now de-rusted, and I'll just give you a quick look at how we've done with that. So you can see the, uh, the front face of the vice there. So I'll get it in the light for you. So that's come up quite nicely there, and it's got all the rust off the, uh, off the back, and the legs are looking really clean as well. So they're ready to go pretty much. They don't really need any more work doing to them. I might check to see if there's any burrs, file off any burrs, if there are any dings that I can feel with my fingers, but it all looks pretty good. Uh, the handle, that was pretty stubborn, that was very rusty, the handle there, so you can see that's cleaned up quite nicely. Now it all looks very grey, the thing is with uh, the de-ruster is it does pickle the metal somewhat, so it gives it this kind of grey finish, but that will come up with a bit of abrasive paper. Um, I'll just show you down the thread as well, you can see how nice and clean that all looks. So that's done a great job. This little bracket, the nut bracket. If you remember, that was fairly rusty before, so now that's come up nice and clean. Can't see any real rust on that at all now. The uh, nuts cover plate, that had a bit of rust on as well, and that's come up really cleanly too. You wouldn't even know they had any rust on it, so a little light coat of oil, that'll be good to go. And on the other side, there's still a little bit of sticker residue from the sticker that was on there. So that'll clean off with a bit of a uh, little bit of isopropyl alcohol, clean that off, and then we'll put the sticker back on when we're ready. And if you remember this particular face here, that was quite rusty as well. And you can see that's come up really nicely now. No rust on there at all. So the next thing to do is to get a coat of paint onto the uh, front vice jaw. 
and then we'll uh, clean up some of these parts with a bit of abrasive paper, then it's ready to put back together again. Before we get on with the painting, I thought I'd just take a moment to show you the bench in situ. I've actually brought the bench inside now, and I don't know how well you can see that. Let me zoom out a little bit. Uh, that's the bench, and that's where it's going to go. Excuse all the mess here. Everything's a little bit kind of uh, <laughs> homeless uh, while I work on the bench. The bench is going to be in and out of that location a few times as it gets worked on. But uh, this stage, I wanted to bring it in, and uh, that's where it's going to end up. So it fits in there quite nicely, as you can see. There's a fairly limited space available. In fact, a space just wide enough for the bench itself. Um, but yeah, it's going to fit in there quite nicely. So anyway, right, let's get on with uh, painting some of this. Well, there's only two bits that need to be painted with this. That's the moving jaw here and quick release lever here. Now, I've given this a little bit of a fettle up. There's a few little sharp edges and a few seams on it. So I just took a few moments just to run a file over and clean it up. And it doesn't have to be polished and perfect. It's going to be painted. Just wants to be nice to the touch, really. So that's ready to paint, as is this. And the paint I'm going to be using is this, Hammerite Smooth. And it's the blue colour, just the standard blue, which is quite a good match for record blue, actually. You can see this one that I did before. This is the Hammerite that I painted on, and that's the original paint. So it's a fairly good match straight out of the tin, which is nice. I'm going to be brush painting it. Um, I'm not going to be bothering to spray this. Not much point spraying it, really. This stuff's really quite good for self-leveling. So you brush it on, as long as you don't get any sags and runs it'll self-level quite well. It'll suck itself down into the textures. Now, in terms of fettling things up, I also did a little bit of work on the legs of the vise. There were a few little dings and chips in the legs, which I could feel if I ran my finger over the surface. So they've been filed down and just gone over with a little bit of steel wool. So they've been cleaned up and I'll get these masked off with a bit of masking tape, as with this, and then we'll give it a coat of paint. It's been a little while since I actually uh, de-rusted these and fettled them up, and they've had a little bit of handling in between. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use some 100% IPA or 99% isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol. I'm just going to give them a little bit of a wipe over with alcohol before we paint, just to make sure there's no grease on there, no fingerprints, nothing that's going to stop the paint from sticking. So just give that a bit of a wipe over, just to get rid of the grease. And we'll let that evaporate off, and then we'll do the same for the... Uh, main jaws as well. Let's give it a go with a brush if that's any easier. There we go, that'll uh, speed it up a bit. So we get that cleaned off and then we can get some paint on it. Right, so we just get a bit of paint on the old quick release lever. Just dabble a bit on the end of the brush there. Years ago, I worked in a naval dockyard, and one of the old boys there gave me a trick when painting hammerite. He said with hammerite, stipple it on. Rather than brush it, just stipple it. Because all you're aiming for, really, is to get a nice, even, reasonably thick coat of paint on. And it will self-level really nicely. So that's what I'm doing here, really. I mean, you can brush it. It doesn't hurt. But uh, it's quite a good little tip, that. Just stipple the paint on. And then, it, especially with this, it gets into all the little textures of the castings, all the sand casting. So it'll help to get all the paint in there. And equally with this as well, you don't want to get too much on the masking tape. Otherwise, it'll it, the paint is so strong, it'll actually bond <laughs> the masking tape into the job. So you don't want to do that. You can see that's already starting to level up quite nicely as it is. I'm going to give this two coats. So I think it takes about four hours to dry. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> so we'll give that four hours, and then we'll come back and give it another coat. Right, same again for the... Uh, moving vice jaw. So again, we'll just uh, stipple the paint in, get a nice even coat. I actually prefer brush painting this kind of stuff. I've done quite a lot of spraying in the past, and spraying is an excellent technique for a lot of things. Like if you've got something that's going to be big and flat, like say a modern lathe casing, something like that, spray painting will give you a really good finish. But on things like this, I just find it's a bit unnecessary to go to all the hassle of having to mask things up and indeed wear a mask yourself because of the fumes. The other thing I like about brush painting is it's just cleaner. You know, you're not going to get overspray. You're not putting tons of uh, paint product into the air. And I don't know about you, but I just find as well that if you use the uh, the brush painted hammerite, it just seems tougher. It seems to me you get a tougher finish if you brush paint it on. I could be wrong. It could be just maybe it's just that you can put it on thicker than you can with spraying. But that's my kind of experience of it anyway. Right. So that's basically it. We'll just uh, carry on getting the paint on and we'll go from there.
Well, that's the first coat hand brushed onto the moving jaw. I hope you can see this okay, but I just want to show you kind of how ropey the finish looks. When you hand brush something, it'll look like this. It'll look a bit lumpy and rough and horrible, and you might think, oh my God, that's gone horribly wrong. Uh, but what we'll do, we'll leave it for four hours. You can recoat this after four hours. So we'll come back in four hours' time and we'll have another look. And hopefully you'll see that it's self-leveled and sort of sucked itself down into the texture. So fingers crossed and uh, I'll see you in a bit. Right, well, it's been about four hours now and the paint's pretty much dry. Touch dry, it's slightly tacky maybe. But I'm hoping that you can actually see the difference now from previously. Uh, the paint's really kind of shrunk back on itself. It's sucked itself down. And you can actually see all the kind of casting marks through it. Uh, hand painting it and stippling it on instead of brushing it on looks pretty horrible to begin with. But you just have to sort of trust in the process and know that it'll end up looking pretty good when it's done. So time to give it one more coat of paint, clean up a few parts, and then we can see about getting it all put back together again. Well, the last thing to do before we can put it all together and get it all uh, lubed up and ready for action is to clean this up. As you can see, there's quite a lot of pickling has happened in the de-rusting process. It's gone quite a dark grey colour, so we need to shine that up a little bit. And there's a few burrs on here as well. I don't know whether you can see that on there. It's a sharp edge all the way around here where this has been used over the years, and this has mushroomed out slightly. There's quite a sharp edge just on the top of here where this ball has bashed into that continuously. It's flared up a little bit of a sharp edge. So I'm just going to file those off and smooth them out because, well, the last thing I want to do is to sort of end up with this clanging down on my finger and giving me a blood blister or, uh, or, or cutting my finger. So we'll do that for some comfort. We'll deburr that and then we'll get it cleaned up with some uh, aluminium oxide paper. The first thing I'm going to do is just take this burr off the edge. And for that, I've got a small six inch, fairly fine file. So I'm just going to rest it on the top of the vise and then just take the burr off. So curved, curved movements with the file. And we just keep going until we get like a nice uniform finish all the way around. Right, that's that deburred. You can see I've been all the way around that with a file and uh, that will just clean up with a little bit of uh, aluminium oxide paper. You can see I put some masking tape on the shaft there. Uh, that was just to protect it as I went around this edge, just to take the very sharp edge off that. Bit of masking tape just to stop me from dinging up the, uh, the shaft. Next, we'll tackle these little burrs on here. So let's get on and do that. Right, so once again, I've got some masking tape on the handle here because I don't want to ding that up with the, uh, the file. I'm just going to take the burr off this edge here. And this can rotate, which is quite handy because I can sort of work on that. Now the file, this particular file, it has a cutting edge on the side and it has what's known as a safety edge. You can see the safety edge has no teeth and it's smooth. So we'll be using the safety edge up against here. So that's a safety edge. We we'll use that one there. And then that's less likely to dig into the handle. It still might. I don't want to get this, this edge, this corner against there too much. So we need to be a little bit careful, but I'm just going to basically go around and carefully just remove that burr off the uh, off the edge here. So we'll just work our way around there. And then we'll just take that down until it's flush. And any scratches, they'll come out with the uh, abrasive paper we'll use in a short while. Right, so hopefully you can see on there, just got rid of that nasty little lip, the sharp lip that was all around there. I've just taken the, uh, the sharp edge off the inside with a bit of uh, abrasive paper as well. So that's all nice and smooth. So now we can polish the whole thing up. To polish this up, I'm going to do it all by hand. I'm not really a big fan of using like wire brushes on grinders and bench grinders and stuff like that. I find it just as quick to do things by hand sometimes. So to help with that, I've got myself one of these little uh, abrasive assortment packs, which are pretty handy actually. You get one inch by 20 foot rolls of uh, aluminium oxide paper and it comes in 150 grit, 240 grit, 320 grit, 400 grit and 600 grit. So that's quite handy. You can actually work your way through the various grits and just take off what you need. So you don't have to buy like a whole roll. And it also, if you don't know what size you want to use, then this is a good way of just sort of trying them out. So I'm going to go for a 240 grit and I'm going to give this a bit of a polish up just using 240 grit aluminium oxide and then work through uh, all the way up to 600 and then probably a bit of steel wool. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So let's tear off a bit of this and uh, give it a go.
Right, well, that's probably it for the first go with the uh, 240 grit. I'm not going to bother getting all these uh, little dings out. I don't need to perfect this, and every ding tells a story of a bored school child with a hammer using it where they shouldn't be. <laughs> but no, add to the character. So, well, that's as long as it needs to take. Quick go over 240. I'll do the ends, flip it over, uh, do a bit on the middle, and then we'll just go up through the grits and go from there. <laughs> Right, that's the handle done with uh, 240 grit. Took a few minutes to do that, not too long. Uh, so now we'll just have a bit of a go on this and uh, see if we can get this shined up as well. So that's basically it, just go over it like that. Now what I will do on this uh, sort of boss here, I don't want to sort of shoe shine that because it's going to lose the nice crisp edge we've got here on this casting. So what I'll do for bits like that is I'll take a file, back the abrasive cloth with a file, and then I can actually just polish using the file, and that'll give me that nice sharp edge still. Just need to go around it like this, so that's the sort of technique for that. So right, I shall carry on polishing and I'll bring you back when we're ready for another grit. Right, so what we've got next, uh, 320 grit, let's try some of that. So I won't bore you with the entire sanding process, <laughs> we'll skip on through and I'll bring you back when I've got something more to show you. But basically we're working along, giving it a quick once over until this thing's nice and shiny and we're out of grits. Right, and there we are, that's all the way up to 600 grit. So you can see that's come up quite shiny. There's a few scratches still in it, but um, I'm not looking for a chrome-plated marble here, just something nice and clean. It hasn't taken too long to do either by hand, so pretty happy with that. So the last thing we'll do is we'll just give it a bit of a go over with some steel wool. And this will just kind of blend in any other little scratches there might be. And you can see there, it's sort of, just looking like nice clean steel again. Same over here, doesn't take long. And we'll rub over the, uh, the pommel as well. So as you can see with this, there's no need really to sort of go to town and take all of the dents and dings and scratches out of it. You know, we're just looking for nice and clean. If you look at that, I think that's, uh, that's gonna look rather nice on the newly painted vise. So with that done, time to put it all back together again. First thing to do, uh, let's have a look. Probably put the lead screw in, I think. So we'll pop that through the front, just slots in there. And what I'll do, get a little bit of uh, lithium grease. I'll put a bit of grease around the, uh, the front of this on the shaft. Just give it a bit of extra lubrication on there. There we go, probably too much, but there we are, that'll do. Right, so that goes in there, like so. Uh, then we've got the uh, quick release lever. All nicely painted, shiny blue paint, very nice. Okay, so again, a little bit of a grease just around where that goes in, just like that. Don't need too much, that's probably way too much there. So, uh, where's that go? That'll go in that way. So, pop that in there, we'll just wipe off any excess. Okay, right, so on the other side, we now need to get the, uh, the spring put in on here on the quick release lever. Let me see if I can. Get you a shot of that. There we go. How's that? Can you see that? There we go. There it is. So the spring then goes on there. Again, I'll probably get a bit of grease around the spring. Just uh, helps keep the rust off, if nothing else. It doesn't really do much other than that. So a smidge bit of grease around that. Just rub it in with my fingers. So there we go. And then the spring 
we'll just pop over the shaft there like so and then we've got the uh quick release bar that runs all the way through so with this what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna oil this up a little bit now i've got some uh stuff here called whey oil um you can see the bottle for it over the back there uh let me bring it over this i mean this isn't specially for this it's just something i happen to have uh this is millway machine slideway oil number 68 so this is for my lathe it's for the lathe ways um and it's a little bit thicker than three and one three and one's a great handy little oil but the whey oil is a little bit more viscous. It's thicker, so it sticks better. So I'm just going to use a little bit of that on here again, maybe just to stop it rusting, really. Um, so we'll put a bit of that on both sides. And I've got the uh, ubiquitous oily rag, so we'll just give that a little bit of an oil. That's all that will need. Now this attaches via a, a screw. What we'll do, that's the threaded side, so we'll pop that on there like so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of copper slip on the screws. Don't need to. I just like to do it if I'm assembling something. A bit of anti-seize compound so that the uh, the next bloke that works on this in 60 years' time is going to take it apart and admire all the care that went into putting it together from the previous bloke. And he'll thank me for it. Right. So let's uh, see if I can... Uh, let me just see if I can see that a bit better. I can't really see what I'm doing right now. So I might hide it from you a little bit, I'm afraid. There we go, now it's going in. A little bit awkward to keep it in view for you, but uh, one of the sacrifices I make, making these videos for you. <laughs> right, let's uh, nip that up, doesn't need to be too tight, just tight enough that it won't come undone. And then let's just have a quick look, wipe my hands off again, because I'm covered in grease now. So let's just have a little look at the, uh, the tension on that. That's pretty firm, I, I think that'll be okay. That's all right, that'll, that'll do. Right, so then. Next thing we need to look at is assembling the uh, so-called nut box. I don't know if it's called a nut box, but that's what I've decided to call it. And what we've got here, so this is the nut. This is what engages on the lead screw over here. And this basically drops in like that and then engages on the lead screw. So what we'll do again, I'm just going to put a little bit of grease in there while we're putting it together, a bit on the sides as well. Get it nicely coated in a few, in a bit of lube. Remind yourself which way round it goes because it has to go the right way round. So it needs to go that way and that will then drop in here. So with this, the pointy bit here points towards the little slot. So again, I'll get a bit of a grease on that because that will be a bit of a bearing surface. And then that will go on there with a couple of, where have they gone? Little square nuts. There's one, nuts, screws, I meant. And there's the other. Okay, right, so same again. Let's put a little bit of copper slip on there just because we can. Don't need much, just a touch. Just get it started. Do another one. And these are eight millimeter across the flats. So I've got a little eight millimeter spanner. Just tighten these up. Not too tight, just tight enough. They only need to be tight enough that they won't come undone, that's all. And we'll flip it up the other way. And then what we can do is put the uh, put the cover back on. So with this, as you remember from previously, I saved the sticker, cleaned it all up, and I've reattached that with a bit of double-sided tape, uh, just because it looks nice. Right, so we'll put that in here. This kind of goes underneath this little step. Let me get that so you can see it. There's a little step there that kind of goes under there and onto that. And then we've got another screw. Again, I'll put a bit of a put a bit of anti-seize compound on just because I'm I'm good like that to our future engineers. So we can screw that back in. 
Okay, and that's that. So the next thing to do is to get these two put together. So what we'll do is uh, just going to get a bit of oil on the uh, lead screw there. A bit of way oil on that. And then a bit of oil down the legs or the rails or... Uh, still haven't got a name for these. Let me know in the comments what you would call these bits here. I've got a, <laughs> I've got a mental blank as to what you call those metal things. We'll call them the metal things. Right, so let's get a bit of oil on there. And then this then goes on here like this. A little bit tricky and it all lined up. And we need to get the uh, quick release lever engaged in the uh, little groove over here. Right, so we'll turn this around, put it under tension, and then this will need to engage in that little slot at the back there. Like so. And there we go, that's it. So that's the vice pretty much assembled. Last thing to do will be to take this and pop this on. And again, we can uh, put a little bit of grease in the hole there. Just for luck. And uh, well, I'll pop a little bit in these end caps. Not that they actually move or anything, but uh, help it to come apart in the future. And then this fits on here like so. And then all it would need on here is um, a washer and a nice new split pin, which I'm not going to use yet because I say this still has to come apart when it, has, when it goes through the aprons on the bench. So I'm not going to actually fit that. Um, but there we go. That's it. That's, the, that's your record number 52 all back together and uh, ready for action.